Hey folks, Quill18 here, back with another part of our Unity 3D slash Blender tutorial on how to make some destructible geometry. In the last episode, we added, we created a cube in Blender. This is a cube that we designed in Blender. It's not very exciting, but it's ours. And uh, so we brought it into Unity. Now it's kind of a little boring and it looks a little funny. And uh, what we really need to do is add a texture to this. So we're going to go right back into Blender, right over here. And we're going to look to add a texture to this cube to make it a little bit more interesting. So the um, couple of things we're going to do. The first thing we, we're going to do is down here, we're going to switch to texture view. You can do this. If you hit Z, it'll go to wireframe. If you hit Z again, it'll go to solid and it'll alternate between those. But if you do Alt Z, then it'll bring you into texture view. And you get this sort of like flat white kind of looking thing that is uh, terrible. That's because we haven't added a texture to it yet. So what we're going to do is we're going to split our view in two by grabbing this little corner here and just dragging it off to the side. And then the left view, I'm going to take it and I'm going to switch to the UV image editor from the pop-up menu here. So the reason is we're going to, we want to add a, a texture to this, but it doesn't know. A texture is just an image. It's just a flat JPEG or ping or bitmap or whatever you want to use that you made in Photoshop. And we're going to apply to the cube, but by itself, our 3D applications don't know how it's supposed to be applied. Um, you can think of our texture as wrapping paper. And this is a gift box that we have. Well, how do you wrap the paper around the box? Um, you know, there's, there's a, there an infinite number of ways to do it. Uh, and it's even more complicated on the computer. So what we have to do with the UV mapping is we are telling the, um, we are telling the 3D application how to apply our texture to our model. So the first thing we're going to do, make sure, um, for this, I actually like to work with the face selection mode down here. So now I can select faces. I'm going to hit A to deselect everything, and now I can click and select entire faces. I'm going to hit A to, again to deselect, hit A a second time to select all. And with that, with everything selected, now I'm going to go back over to the UV mode, and I'm going to load an image into Blender. Um, I'm going to go to the image menu, hit open image, and I have to navigate to, oh, I just realized I don't have my, uh, I don't have my image in the right place. So just hold one moment, please. I gotta bring this up. Destructible geometry, assets, and I'm just gonna paste an image in here. So I've already got uh, this building block image that I used for my game. So now that I've, I've got this texture that I put together in, in Photoshop, now I can go into image, I can open image, and there's my building block texture. So I'm gonna select that, and you'll be able to see what it looks like. So it looks a little funny here. Uh, let me deselect everything here. This row here represents the windows of my buildings, the sort of office building glassy kind of look. If I go back over into my game, and let me reset the level here, you can see my building clearly, you know, it kind of looks like an office building, and that's that texture that I drew. Uh, if I go to one of the shorter ones and go on top of the, uh, the roof, you can see that it's just sort of like this flat, can I not make this jump? There we go. This flat kind of concrete, uh, it's a little bumpy because I've got it applied as a bump map later on as well, but um, but that's that. So if we flip back into Blender, you can see that. You can see the um, the, the windows, and then you can see it's just sort of concrete kind of texture everywhere. Now, we've applied that to our cube at this point, and obviously it doesn't look right. And the reason is it's just sort of every one of our faces is getting the whole image applied to it and stretched, right? So the top and the side, and it just, it doesn't look right. But if we save this, and we flip back into Unity, it'll import our model, it'll pull in the texture, and there it is. Again, it doesn't, it doesn't look right. Not, not at all, but it's there. So what we need to do is we need to tell our 3D apps how it should be applying the texture to the side. Uh, and there's a lot of different ways to do this. Personally, for this particular type of, um, of image, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the end cap and I'm going to select this side here by holding shift and then right clicking on the second one. I'm going to hit U and unwrap. And you can see over here on the left hand side, you can actually see the end cap is mapped to right here and this side is mapped to right here. You could also see that the textures changed on there when I unwrapped it. So if I select both, I've got them both here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move their UV mapping area by hitting G for grab. I'm going to hit Y to lock it to the Y axis and bring it up and you can see the windows are showing up on the side. So I'm going to line it up 
to be about here. I'm going to hit A to deselect. I'm going to hit B to box select. Grab the top row vertices here. Hit G and Y again. And get it about there. You know, I'm kind of doing a quick rough job, and then we can tweak it later on if things are not quite right. So that that's pretty good. Let's do the other side. Do the same thing. I'm going to select both these sides. Hit U. Hit unwrap. Select all. Grab. Lock to the Y axis. And lock to the Y axis. Like that. There we have it. In fact, I probably should have done it slightly differently. You know what? Let's not let's not fuss over it. Now I'm going to do the top and the bottom. I'm going to hit U, unwrap, and again I've got a sort of two two bits there. I'm going to grab, you can see them, there's two squares. I'm just going to grab the top one by mousing over where the vertice is and hitting L. It's just going to select the top one, or that might be the bottom, either, either, either way. Now I'm just going to slide it down so it's just, it's only covering the concrete itself. And now our block looks well, pretty much the way that I want. I can save this again. I can flip back to Unity. And you know we're looking pretty solid. Now there is one funny behavior. If we get in here, I'm not sure if it'll be quite as visible now that it's textured. Yeah, but um the way oh yeah, there's no <laughs> there's no collision box, so I can walk right through. Um right now, by default, when you pull in a model from Blender, the, the edges are considered to be relatively smooth, the way the lighting is. If this wasn't textured, if this was just a flat color, it would be more obvious, but there, it looks, yeah, you really can't tell here, but you have to believe me that the edges are a little bit off. Actually, I can, I, I know how I can prove it to you. I'm going to take my building block, I'm going to hit Control-D to duplicate it, and I'm going to bring one up, three. Now I've got them stacked on top of one another. What you'll be able to tell is that the lighting is not right between the two of them. Um, you can see where the two of them are touching, and it just it doesn't look right, and there's like these weird shadows. And it's because by default, these cubes are are have smooth edges. And there's a couple of ways to, to correct that. Uh, you can collect, correct it in Blender. I'm gonna not do that quite yet. What I'm going to do instead is in my assets here, in the model, I'm going to go for the normals and tangents. I'm going to switch the normals to be calculated. And I'm going to apply that. And that's going to fix it. So now it's got sharp, crisp edges. And you can no longer see the seam between the blocks because everything, everything is flat the way it's supposed to be. There's not supposed to be a seam. There's not supposed to be a kind of a bulge in the middle here. This is a perfectly flat wall. And now everything looks exactly the way we want. Um, I'll talk about a little bit more about the normals and edges maybe a little bit later. But for now, this is a great way. Most of the time, most of the uh, the geometry, the simple geometry that you're going to pull in from Blender, that is the way to uh, to deal with it.